Hey everybody, it's Crackpot Farmer. I'm still alive, I haven't posted in a while, but we're really busy with getting ready to go for seeding. The weather outside is terrible, so I am hiding in my shop once again, which seems to be where I do most of my videos. So today we're gonna to be talking about the digital identity. Now I said a little while ago that we were going to talk about this and it's been quite a while because we've had lots of stuff going on, but we're finally gonna get biting into it today because a friend of mine sent me a text and it got me thinking, okay, I need to talk about this. So we're going to talk about it. But first we're going to talk about something else and that is a problem solving tactic that I've kind of sort of developed over the years and I'm going to use it to help explain the digital identity and the problems with it. This problem solving strategy that I came up with I kind of call the analysis of extremes and it is taking things to the absolute extreme to see what difference a small change would make. Now a pretty decent example of this is going to be fuel economy of your car. So if you want to know like say okay if I put a 50 pound bag in the back seat of my car is it going to make a difference in my fuel mileage? Well, the analysis of extremes method will say, put a 10 ton weight in the back of your car. Will that make a difference? Well, of course it's gonna make a difference. You're gonna like make my car 10 times heavier than it currently is. Well, there's your answer. Your 50 pound bag is going to make a difference in your fuel economy, not much, maybe just a little bit, but it is going to make a difference. So we're gonna use this extreme analogy in order to try to see if we can explain why digital identity is not such a great thing once you get past the conveniences and the good looking things on the surface. Now YouTube is a main platform that we're using for the Crackpot Farmer because we're mainly a video presence, I guess you could call us now. So if you're on Facebook, for example, and you're not getting all of our updates, that's because we're putting them on YouTube. That is the place you're gonna get them first and the most, that's the place you're the most likely to see them. We are linking things to Facebook and sometimes I upload them directly, but please go to YouTube. That is gonna be the place where you're going to find the most comments. You're going to be able to find all the videos there a lot easier. They're organized into playlists and stuff. So if you're not on YouTube, please move over there. That will be the easiest way if you want to continue to see our content. Now, the digital identity is becoming a growing concern for us in the, con the spoiler alert crowd. We used to be called the conspiracy theory crowd, but then we had to change our name because we were right so often. So now we're just the spoiler alert crowd. We're getting t-shirts. So the digital identity is when and where all of your personal information is in one place accessible by anybody who needs access to it. So we're going to take what digital identity is to the absolute extreme to see what could possibly be wrong with a nice, excellent, convenient system like not having to need passwords anymore. So we're going to go on a bit of a story. The year is 2030. You own nothing and are ha- wait a second, that's something else. The year is 2030 and the digital identity has been built back better and is functioning at peak capacity. All is well for the super well-connected and technologically advanced society that exists here on Earth. We all have some kind of a biomarker in us, be it a chip under the skin or something in your eye or, I don't know, something along that lines, a tattoo that goes with us wherever we are. It can't be removed, it cannot be erased, it can't be covered up, taken off, whatever. It is with us all of the time. Wherever we go and whatever we do is logged and tracked and taken account of. When we go to purchase something, we don't have to take our wallet with us. We don't need credit cards or anything because when we go into the store, it picks up who we are and where we are and it watches us pick up every single item and it just takes money straight out of our account and we walk out the door. We don't have to call the credit card company anymore, we lose our wallets. We don't have to call the DMV or the healthcare provider or the insurance provider because we don't have to carry our wallets anymore. Everything is linked to that chip. You cannot possibly forget your driver's license because it's always available and accessible to whoever needs access to that information. Same when you get home from work, your money gets deposited straight into your account. No pay stubs, no anything. I know we've had direct deposit for a while, but this is a little bit next level. Now, there still seems to be a bug in the system because taxes are still on paper and you still have to pay for them. So that's kind of strange. Now your online presence is an awful lot easier. You don't have to remember any passwords. You sit down at the computer or whatever it is, maybe an advanced version of Google Glasses maybe, and bleep, you scan your finger, your arm, your hair, you sit on the photocopier, whatever it is to scan that marker in and you're logged in. You don't have to remember your passwords. You don't have to change them all the time. You don't have to have a book with all that stuff written down that you lost with your wallet. It's all just there. Applying for loans is easier. Buying a car is easier. Paying all your bills. Anything having to do with money and personal information is a lot easier because it's all in one place and it all follows you wherever you go and it's accessible by whoever needs it it makes life an awful lot easier. But your past, your spending habits, your business meeting with the lady at the office, it's all tracked, it's all recorded, and everything you do is calculated and tabulated. This is where things can start to get a little bit nasty. Y'all remember this past winter when a certain government decided to invoke the Emergencies Act to sweep away some unwanted civilians who were gathered upon some certain streets in a particular city or yonder a little ways. You remember that? 
Do you remember how bank accounts were frozen, how licenses were suspended, how business rights were suspended, how vehicle registrations were suddenly no longer valid? Do you remember those things? The government said at the time when they evoked the Emergencies Act that they wanted to make some of these emergency powers more permanent. With digital identity, that is an absolute breeze to do. Oh dear, it looks like Johnny Boy was hanging out with a spoiler alert crowd again. Hmm, looks like his plane ticket across the pond just doubled. It'll be a lot more difficult for him to go visit with his friends now. Oh, what's that? Did he say something against the United Nations? Hmm, looks like he's walking. His car isn't going to work and he's not permitted on public transport for the next month. Beep. He had the audacity to show up at a peaceful gathering and express his displeasure against how the way the government is currently handling things. Looks like he won't be eating anytime soon. Hmm. And because of all the information that we have on him, we know which friends are most likely to help him out too, so that won't be a problem either. Now, yes, we're taking this to the extreme, but that's why I said I was using this extreme analysis tool to try to show you what can happen with digital identity. This is taken to extreme, but it's not out of the realm of possibilities. While we're at the extremes, let's talk about medical things and how they could tie into this. Looks like Johnny didn't get his fifth poke at the local clinic this year. Hmm. Well, you see, that's a public health violation that deserves a fine. Cha-ching! Oh dear, it looks like he is going to be missing too shortly. We may have to apprehend him and put him in a safe place until he understands that we know what's best for him. Now, in the People's Public of Canada, the rule is that after two children, you must get sterilized. It's for the greater good. Your accounts will be frozen until you comply. Now, this all may seem really, really far-fetched and blown out of proportion and completely unrealistic, but this system is functioning to a certain extent in a country as we speak, and it has been for quite a while. Now, the country is the country that completes the phrase made in. Go and look up the social credit system if you haven't heard of this, and you'll see just what I'm talking about. Now, the spoiler alert crowd says that this kind of stuff is coming, but the naysaying crowd says, well, they're naysaying because that's what the naysaying crowd does. But a small bank here in Alberta, Alberta Treasury Branch, who is the financial institution of choice for some farmers, oil and gas companies, and other people who are in industry, has come out today saying, and I quote, We are excited to be partnering with the government to advance Canada's digital identity efforts, says Sue McGill, Senior Vice President of ATB Ventures. Hmm. You know, it might not be so far out after all. So go take a look at the social credit system, take a look at digital identity, and think about, using the extremes, what those consequences could possibly be. The surface convenient features are fantastic. I lose my wallet sometimes, I cannot remember any passwords, and my wife knows most of the banking stuff because, well, I know the farm stuff because that's my job. So the convenience of the digital identity system could be awfully convenient, make things a lot easier. But there are problems when the government, who has shown they can do whatever they want whenever they want already, when you give them more power and more control and put all your information in one little nice neat bundle for them, we could be having some serious problems. Thanks for watching, guys. Please put your questions or the future topics you want me to cover into the comments below. I do read them. I do take them into account. If you have me on Telegram or if you do know my number and there's things you want me to talk about, please send those to me. Also, check out our farming stuff because this is a farm and that's my passion. That's what I do. We're starting to put up a few videos. We did one here a little while ago talking about fertilizers and we're just getting into how agriculture in its current form in Western Canada really isn't sustainable and we're going to be diving deep into all kinds of things related to that. So if you want to watch some farming stuff, check out the other things on our channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.